like you said, that father thing. Yeah, that was never an option for me. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting because when I was younger, I I never thought about it. Never thought about it. And you know, marriage, as you know, has never appealed to me at all. Yeah, and it still doesn't. I quote you all the time. What did I say? You said. The, um, or maybe it's something I said when I was much younger. That no, no, no. I might no, be it's still, back. The last time you were on this this podcast, which was at the studio, yeah. I'm pretty sure I requoted it to you and you said, I still agree to that. Oh, it was something that's... about it's far more important or like the something, I don't want to misquote, but it was something right. about in the lines of to you, it is far more important and appealing or, or whatever to be a father than a husband. Oh, I agree 100%. That's far more appealing to be a father than a husband. Absolutely. I still stand by that. Yeah. yeah. And, but it's only been, uh, maybe since my mid thirties, maybe early to mid thirties when that drive for it really kicked in. Like I, on a drive to, you know, down the freeway going to wherever it is I'm going to a project site or whatever, you've got an hour to, to think. And, I've envisioned it as I'm driving down the, the freeway. Children, you know, uh, a son, a daughter, their names, you know, the life that I would have as a father. And it just seems so appealing. And it's something that I would really like. So th- that has really kicked in. Of course, there are a, a number of steps one must take before, you know. <laughs> it's like George Costanza. You get to that. I'd like to have a kid. you got to get a date first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, you need to I don't see you as a father more so than I see you as like some Brangelina, Amber Heard, and Johnny Depp fucking marriage on a red carpet. <laughs> that's uh, like. <laughs> that's really. Uh, dude, tinsel thanks, on the. Dude. Thank tinsel. You. <laughs> Tinsel on the first, the first half, and then just some scandal. Oh, Jesus. Come on, I'm fucking joking. Relax, No, man. no. <laughs> I really hope that's not true. <laughs> Being on an angry voicemail with me that I put on the podcast just to, <laughs> just to get the hype, you know what I mean? Just being on some call like Mel Gibson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just take my Laker tickets. <laughs> <laughs> Poor bastard. Bend over backwards. My balls in a knot. <laughs> <laughs> he went nuts. Like, he actually- That's one of the most epic series of fucking calls. That's it. I love it, man. <laughs> fucking poor dude, man. Uh, has he recovered from like all that, or is he still sort of blacklisted? But, oh, he'll always be blacklisted for to a point. Yeah, for speaking out all the against- anti-Semitic shit that he yeah, used to yeah. say. Yeah. yeah, but I think I, I think he was quoted as saying, you know. They're very forgiving when the movies that come out of your studio make you X amount of hundreds and millions. So yeah. maybe there is some forgiveness there if this, if you know, the studio is making them so much money. Now, sorry to like segue to Mel Gibson, but fatherhood. What's your your take on it? Yeah, like um, no, I, I, I would I would like to have that. You know, um, have you always wanted it. Yeah, I mean, I've always, I mean, it's not something that I think about all the time. Uh, you know, I mean, for me, it's more, you know, I want to I be able to find, I, to me, I, I can't be thinking too far ahead because I'm thinking, well, I need to find the right person first. You, you know need what I mean? to find the right person to have yeah, them with. Yeah, and so yeah. for me, that's been, that, that's been the thing for me. If I find the right person, then of course- uh, it's a kind of a no-brainer if I find the right person. But, um, yeah, so I haven't really kind of been entertaining it too much because then it's like, well, fuck, I've got to be a dad and fucking anyone will do. Like, All right, how about you? Yeah, whatever. You know fuck. there are people like that, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Well, see, the problem is, well, I don't know if it's a problem, but- A lot of women think that way because of their biological clock. Because they they yeah, they start they're, looking for sperm donors. They have to. They, they they start getting they start getting really really desperate with it because yeah. they have that biological urge, yeah, man. Yeah. And hey, who can blame them, man? That's their fucking body. Well, that's why they were created. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> well, it was. I mean, that's why nature created them is to you know to procreate. I, I have a lot of sympathy for <laughs> women. Sounds so bad. But <laughs> no, it's but it's true. Very- <laughs> no, but that's science. You know, I have a lot of sympathy. Simone's for- a great guy. Well, I'm just <laughs> yeah. letting you know. No, but I have a lot of sympathy for women who a childless and really want to have a child because there is that natural biological drive in them to do so. Mm. I have no sympathy for a woman who's who is not married and is whining or depressed or complaining about that. I don't, there's 
that's a whole different thing. But a childless woman, yeah, there is a. I have a lot of sympathy for that, and I can understand that. Before, when I spoke about these ideals of having children, um, I think it's grown. It's become more intense, and I actually do think about it a lot because I feel I've got so much to give children. Like there's a lo- there's so much inside me, but that's just for children. So uh, there's a lot for me to give, but it's just for children. And I feel that it would be a shame for that to go to waste. So I feel like I've got a lot to pass on and a lot of love to give, but that love and all that is 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 just for children. Here's a question. That's how I feel. What about you? What about you? Me. Yeah, because you said before. It wasn't really. <laughs> I don't know, he's got his hand up. He's, <laughs> Sorry, he's honing in. Like, yeah, mm. you said before. I think you said before that it wasn't really part of your idea. No, because I grew up in an environment where that was just the norm, right? Like when we were yeah. Greeks, we all lived in the same houses. That was the norm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for Greeks. Oh yeah, you get married at like twenty three. Twenty three. People getting married at twenty three. Yeah, Dude, I was at my mates. Bucks or something, like last year or the year before, I was standing in line at a club, a club, fucking in our late 30s, going into clubs, you know what I mean? Like waiting in line. And there were these girls behind us. So we started chatting to them. And pretty, this pretty girl, right? Like she, she was a pretty girl. She, seemed, she started talking about her fiance and she seemed really, really young, like really young. Mm. And she's like, oh, and all her friends, like, oh, it's my hen's night, la la la. I'm getting married in like two, three weeks or something. I'm like, oh. Okay, and then I asked something like, you know, why are you getting married or like, you know, what do you love about your partner or something just, you know, about the wedding or whatever, or the relationship, because all her friends are like, oh, yeah, she's getting married. How beautiful does she look? La, la, la. She's so lucky, this, this, and that. And they all looked really, really young. (sighs) Shows me a ring. It was like this massive, gargantuan fucking rock boulder, man. Like, seriously, like they literally pulled it off a mountain and just slapped some metal underneath it. Forged it to fit her finger. Like, it was ridiculous. I'm like, hey, a nice ring, man. I didn't ask to see it, but okay. <laughs> and then she starts telling me about it. She says, this is my fiance. Look at the ring he gave me. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I see it. So, how old are you again? Like you're supposed to be impressed by her bobble. Yeah, yeah, dude. And I asked her how old she was, and she was like 20. Wow. I'm like, ugh. Ugh. Like, what? Yeah, it's how a different- How old's your fiance? And he was like 30. Ah. I'm yeah, like, yeah. It's not a good age gap. Yeah, and I was just like, why are you marrying this guy? Well, what's the rule? It's like half your age plus seven. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, so it's a fucking works out, man. Half your age plus seven. What's that? The minimum <laughs> gap you meant to have with uh, with like a so in a theoretically our future wives could be twenty seven and no more than that, no less than that. Yes, that makes sense. By twenty seven, you still got 20s. half your shit. But- 20 and 30, the, the gap look, is too big. I'm not saying that a, inexperience. I'm not saying love is, isn't ageless, but fuck me. I'm looking at a 19 year old. Yeah. Hasn't had a, has a, has had six months outside of high school. Well, what does kid, a 30 year old want? Let the kids get, uh, uh what, I don't <laughs> fun. what I don't understand is why it's <laughs> such a troll. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's because you got the fucking hood on as well. It's killing me. No, it's because of the light, man. My fucking eyes are fucking. I don't know. I don't understand why a 30 year old wants something serious out of a 19 year old. I'm going to understand him wanting to have sex with her. She was a, a good looking her. girl. I want to lock but- her down, baby. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, she's a good looking girl, so you have fun with her. You don't marry her. I mean,. Yeah. That's fresh out of the packet. <laughs> <laughs> no mildew, no nothing. <laughs> no wear and tear. <laughs> that new car smell. <laughs> That's disgusting, man. <laughs> you car smell. Yeah, dude. But like 19 years old, mm. she doesn't know shit from clay yet. But does she need to? Well, no. She <laughs> said, the other thing she said was he treats me well and he buys me shit. I oh, see. Well, there you there go. You go. Well, I, was, I was looking at these. I was horrified. Well, it I goes just, back to I what said, we were what? talking Congratulations, before. Congratulations, and I moved away. <laughs> it goes back to what we were talking before. Look, that's an isolated before. example. All right? But it's an example of what we touched on earlier. You wouldn't think in like the two twenty twenties or whatever that that shit would still be floating around. Oh yeah, but I don't think that's changed at all. No, these values and expectations haven't changed. No, I don't think they have. I think, but why? I don't think that they should, man. I think, I mean, look, you're 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 an example of someone that doesn't want to get married. That's fine, but I think marriage—it's part of our culture. It's part of our society. I don't think it's going to change. No, but uh, in, in terms of you know, he treats me well and he buys me things. Th- those kind of old ideals, I don't think will ever go. Away. You're still going to get a, a significant portion of women that that'll be at the top of their list. Well, when- you know, diamonds is the whole the whole diamond industry is. Uh, 
it's a it's a fake industry. Yeah, when they, they burn. Well, they burn diamonds to put up the demand. What do you mean they burn diamonds? Like they get rid of them. They 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 don't they they're not at worth as much as they are because the, the whole diamond business is a it's a bit of a rot. <laughs> you tell you. <laughs> They raw. do, man. They do. It's a raw. <laughs> it is. I can't wait when you turn around and show me some fucking thirty k ring that you get for some I'm broad. Not, nah, man. Some broad. <laughs> some broad. Look, <laughs> if I'm if I'm rolling in it and I'm a, and I'm balling hard like that, then fair enough. But then, but honestly, like, which is probably not, you know, what's the rule? Well, the rule is at least you got to spend at least fifteen thousand dollars. Nah, man. Fuck that. I'm fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, <laughs> the the woman. With where I'm at right now, the woman is going to be on my level. She's not going to be wanting some fucking big rock on her finger. She's not going to be that kind of yeah, chick. You got to you got to spend at least fifteen k. I'm told. <laughs> um, but there are a lot of guys, the fools that they are, though. That they go and <laughs> fools. Well, they go into fools. They fools. But what happens? My question <laughs> well, is, they're what- fools because they go and get a loan to buy a, a rock. But, what, but how else are they going to get it? They shouldn't be getting it in the first yeah, place. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, how, what happens to that ring? Once they buy it, like, what the fuck happens to it? It sits on that woman's <laughs> finger so, so the- she can flash it off to her friends. No, but, but when they actually... It's an engagement ring, right? Yeah, it yeah. is. So then what happens when they actually get married? You wear your wedding ring. No, well, you either get a wedding ring that's designed to slide right onto the yeah. engagement or you wear it on opposite fingers. Yeah. So, so you they, still wear it. Oh, you still wear the yeah, engagement Yeah, it doesn't ring. get put in a yeah, cupboard. It doesn't get put, that's yeah. the one they hold, yeah, man. Yeah, they, they hold onto it. So that's why, <laughs> you know, there are so many men that don't have the money. Li- Look, if you've got the 15 or 30 or 50K lying around and it won't hurt you one little bit to, and you're rolling in it, be my guest, buy it. But if you have to go and get a loan for a piece of jewellery, that, that's, that's I, just silly I've, bloody I've nonsense. Big, yeah. And those stupid women that push these stupid men to get that loan so they can walk around with the, the thing on their finger. I is mean, that I, how much it is? 15 grand? They say it's like but, three months' salary. So an ideal salary would be, say, $1,000 a week or whatever. So twelve to 15 k in a three months' Well, month they say period. that, yeah, it should, you should be spending at least $15,000 on the, on the engagement ring. But the problem is a lot of men, because they're stupid, they've got stupid women pushing them around to buy this bloody thing, they go into finance for jewellery. And that's that you should not be getting finance for jewellery. That's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, I agree. That really makes me angry. I don't know, man. I I don't come from... I mean, my mum's never fucking been like that. You know, she fucking... She'll set... (laughs) But these are... Dude, these are... These are isolated. Like, we're talking about... Like, our parents are different. No, our parents' generation weren't fixed on these things. No. This is my but, like years. Who's but fucking this is saying a, this shit? More of a, a, a modern. Do you remember that in a crop kind of thing? <laughs> no. Where's where Jim's got his grandfather's his grandmother's wedding ring, and he's just like, "Wow, you know what a ring!" Like, he's, yeah, yeah. My grandfather sold everything he had to get that for her. <laughs> anyway, I want to get a price on it for a new muffler. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a, it's a whole symbolic, you know, value of it. You know, it's the symbolism of. Well, the and, ring. and a lot of the women believe that the more he spends, the more he loves you. That's bullshit. Oh, it is bullshit. Who but- are these women? <laughs> Who are these fucking antiquated women? That, where, where are they from? A fucking, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, I don't they're fucking- everywhere. They, they live amongst us sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Like yeah. vampires like in the va- night. Yeah, they're, va- <laughs> they're vampiric for jewelry. Yeah, literally. Yeah, yeah and, and I, I know guys that, you know, have, haven't been, you know, that they've gone and spent three or four thousand. And the women find out how much they've spent and they get disappointed. And they, you know, because the guy got the ring from Zamels or from Michael Hill. <laughs> you know, he, 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 he didn't go to Tiffany's. He didn't go to Vulgari. You know, he didn't go to a you know, more higher-end jewellery store. Yeah, there are women that place so much value on these engagements. What if you stole the ring from, like, Bulgari? <laughs> then what? Oh, if you did, like, an old <laughs> an old diamond caper and you broke into Bulgari's. Yeah, you did, like, a, you know, like a, a, a heist. Heist. A full heist. Like a cat burglar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're, I can see now we all meet here at the studio. Balaclavas, a white colors. van, unmarked, <laughs> straight, <laughs> Tiffany's a crown. You're fucking doing, like, the limbo under lasers and shit <laughs> to get it. No, like, I, if we did a heist, it'd be more like Michael Mann's Heat, like a hundred percent. It wouldn't be like it wouldn't be like a Tom Cruise job through the ceiling. No. It'd be it's like you know the old days when you you know steal diamonds from a museum. And- <laughs> See, that's fun to me. <laughs> See, whatever happened to a good old fashioned diamond cape? Yeah, good old <laughs> heist. Cunts don't rob museums. <laughs> Well, there's no value in it. Everything's no, crypto exactly. now. Exactly. You can't. Well, you care. Mona Lisa. 
<laughs> what is this firewood? You, know what I mean? you can't steal the jewels, crown jewels anymore. No. The technology's too advanced. Yeah. Yeah, there's no point. No, in the 50s, you could. Yeah, I'm picturing You'd, a lot of Dean Martin, Frank yeah, Sinatra type You could movies. break into the museum in the 50s and pull a scam. <laughs> you're yeah, definitely they, they, going they, to jail they, at some point. You're going to, you, you need to serve we, time. You reckon? Yeah. <laughs> I nah. think that'll be character building for you. Really? Yeah. Why do, why do you say that? Because <laughs> you're, you're this deep troubled artist yeah. and like in the timeline, <laughs> you need to have that stint in prison. I'm not saying that you're going to go to jail for like, you know, drug abuse or anything like that. Like Robert Downey Jr. or something? Or maybe nah. like for- Robert well, Downey Jr. was like he got he was lucky that he resurfaced the way he did. Yeah, fucking yeah, he was on story. meth in an alleyway off Man, his head. Biggest I, fucking comeback ever. Yeah, yeah. No, what I'm saying is you need to tarnish that record. Just add a bit of a color to it. Yeah, right. Okay, I'm too clean. <laughs> I'm too squeaky clean. <laughs> well, <laughs> they need to find some dirt on me. <laughs> <laughs> Good old jail stint. <laughs> Boost your publicity, man. Your agent will be like, oh, brilliant. <laughs> when, when are you out? <laughs> Get the marketing campaign going, man. Fuck, man. What would I go in for? That's the question. I don't know. If you Maybe had some link to organized crime or. Oh, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, that, that is that's cool. cool. You have some kind of link to organized crime. Yeah, maybe crime. I'm like a driver to a, like, a, like a bank robbery or something. <laughs> <laughs> you aiding and abetting a robbery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was an accomplice. <laughs> what's what I... I what? <laughs> It'd be cool. Like, that, that, that's a cool thing. Well, it's, a, it's also... Well, I tell to be people, involved in a fucking... <laughs> when people see the scar at the back of my head, I tell them I was in prison. Oh, yeah. You talked that the other yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know... <laughs> I tell people I got I got glassed when I was in. Someone was trying to rape you. I mean. Well, no, it wasn't a rape. It was just a. It was just. <laughs> it was just a fight, you know. And I, yeah, but people like the story. You know, you just kind of keep it going. And <laughs> that's what I tell people. That's what I tell girls about my the the what? scar on my tongue. You have a scar on your tongue? Yeah. Well, yeah, people get when turned get on that? by scars. Uh, yeah, yeah, crazy right. ex-girlfriend. Yeah, but there's, there's also a market for arousal because you've been in prison. I was in a gambling den in Tibet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, mean, yeah. I was, I was, I was cockfighting in Tibet. <laughs> a mate of mine had gone under for at least thirty mil. I went to bail him out. You know, there, there are people that'll get turned on if you've told them you're in, you've been in prison. So there is a fetish for that. So yeah. it can that can work. You're a big fan of the women in prison. Movies. Oh yes, <laughs> Jeez, absolutely. Was, also, there was one that you always used to go back to. That I, I chained heat. That's <laughs> chained heat. What a Linda name Blair. for a movie. But man. there was that, that one. Who was in that? Linda Blair. In the blue. But then there was that one I sent. Remember that scene I sent you of the, yeah. the so- red heat? Yeah. It was like behind the Iron Curtain Soviet. She's always the innocent being thrown into a corrupt prison with lesbians and Lesbian drug. Russians, and, yeah. Yeah. Lesbian communists. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Gangs. And there was that scene I sent you where um, Sylvia Crystal was raping Linda Blair. Yeah. And it was intercut with Soviet propaganda. Oh, really? I used to get turned on watching by watching that as a kid. No like, shit. I was 10 years old and I was watching this woman rape this other woman. How did you get that movie at 10? I rented it from the How video the- shop. I know, man. It was weird, man. Well, I knew this guy when he was 10. It was in the action section and my parents yeah. let me get whatever I wanted from he the action section. He could get anything. His parents were so liberal with it. He with was watching movie, yeah. erotic thrill- thrillers at 10 <laughs> and then t- t- doing show and tell at fucking in Miss is his class yeah, oh, being what? yelled at, yeah. Yeah, talking about fucking actors like Bob Hoskins, <laughs> and then she was getting fucking frustrated and pissed off because <laughs> she didn't know what you were talking about. Yeah, because I, I stood up and I did a show and tell about Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> I'm like a ten, ten years old. Yeah, man, yeah. weird. And I'm like, Shut up, you stupid boy! Get out! <laughs> Get out! Get out! <laughs> <laughs> well, I stood up once and I told the class that. <laughs> That uh, Cher had a tattoo on her ass, and I got yelled at for that. Because I saw the Turn Back Time music video. You didn't see that music video. Yeah, or then, you know, for Basic Instinct, and I said, and two women kiss in that, and they dance together at a club, and they start kissing. Shut up! Sit down! (laughs) (laughs) The the same thing. But I'll tell a quick funny story from our- fucking dying, man. Yeah, from our childhood. See, we we got our hands on 80s Playboys, you know? And now in the days where you you had full growlers, like, you know, full boxes (laughs) of hair, and I went around telling everyone that the hole was in the middle of the hair. I didn't realise it was underneath. I you had, to, you had to penetrate the middle of the, the growler. So me and me and uh, uh, Alex and I and another friend of ours, we got scissors and we cut out the pubic hair, like triangles of pubic hair, and we stuck it all over the boys' toilets. Like you'd walk into the boys' toilet. We were in grade three. 
We walk in Fuck, and there's just I remember this. there's growls off, just, <laughs> this is just stuck on the walls. <laughs> he's, he's trying to tell, no no no. Tell I remember telling the story. No, I don't remember that part. I don't remember the sticking the yeah. We growls stuck the, the growls <laughs> and then is this butch Scottish teacher? She came in and started screaming at us. Yeah, and we all got sent to the principal. We did individually. Yes, we did. I remember that. Yes, we all, and then and you know because when you're a kid, you're very honest with things. And the principal was asking about my my home life and what oh, I do yeah, at yeah, home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I told liberal arts family. <laughs> well, actually, my parents are a mixture of conservative and liberal, depending on what topic you get. The liberal traditionalists. Yeah. So I told the principal that. Um, I have sex with my pillows at home. I told him that I, I imagine that my pillow is Kathleen Turner. And I, How old were you? Ten. And you, you could... You, I was sexually <laughs> already Kathleen at Turner. It was of all people. <laughs> so, I know. What I used to do, I'd get on top... So I'd watch people having sex in movies or simulated sex. So then I thought, that looks all right. That looks like fun. So I'd just pretend the pillow was a girl and I'd roll around on it. And then he looked at me and he goes, that's so unhealthy. No, he said that to me too. Not about the pillow, but he said the same word. Like, that's yeah. so unhealthy. What did yeah. you tell him? I told him about how... He goes, <laughs> He goes, what, how, what, is this ruining this man's life? <laughs> yeah, basically, you know, what, is this a normal thing for you, you know, about Playboys and all this kind of stuff? Playboys. And then I was like, well, you know, my, I told him about my uncle's uh, workshop. They had a, you know, they had the, the mechanic. The, oh, the new the, the car, yeah, Marathon no, the, Foods. Man, uh, I was just saying, in the kitchen, the, the, whole, yeah. the whole thing was covered in... Tits in, and ass, in, yeah. in, in yeah. tits and ass and, and naked ch- all the calendars back then all the Repco calendars yeah. were like naked chicks <laughs> yeah and I was telling him about that it was just plastered everywhere in the kitchen he, and then he just looked at me and he was like <laughs> that's so unhealthy, that's so unhealthy. <laughs> I remember this like it was yesterday because the teacher <laughs> snatched the playboys <laughs> off I goes, what are you doing with these and we're like well, they're, they're good there's good articles in them you know that was 10 year old articles. 10 year old Simo's reading articles in Playboy I, I mean yeah? I read the Fidel Castro interview and the Martin Luther King interview when I was 10 and my dad knew that I was reading it he thought it was it was not a bad thing for me to be reading but they <laughs> called my parents up and they recommended therapy for me and my parents were like he's just a curious kid you know yeah. they, they didn't see anything wrong with no, that no neither did my parents and, no. and because they, my parents were pretty I mean you know, they were my dad, obviously, and my mum, you know, like. Those are generally what parents are. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? like, yeah. Sorry, man. I was, just yeah. to point out the obvious. <laughs> sorry, sorry. But, like, <laughs> open, they weren't, you know, like, they weren't kind of like peasant Greeks from the village, you know no. what I mean? No, like, we didn't have parents like you that. You know, my dad was from Athens, you know, yeah, he was so a was city mine. boy, you know, like, it was very, grew up in, you know, yeah. that, that kind of but environment. But the important, so. parents, they didn't shame us for having. A perfectly normal and natural interest yeah. in women and they had sex. a very they had a very yeah European yeah. I would say way of looking yeah. at it. Like my parents were they they never had an issue with me with sex scenes. They had an issue with me with violence, watching violent movies. They didn't want me watching violence. Mm. The sex scenes were okay. You know what I mean? Like SBS films. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, but it was just the violence that was. I think me it was more swearing. The violence was fine because I was into martial arts. Ah, see, my yeah. mum got me my first uh. martial arts movie at five years old when I took up k- karate. I ca- I, this is one of my f- earliest memories, man. Like one of my earliest happy memories. Five years old, I've come home from primary school. I still remember it was like a warm, like Arvo day or whatever, where it's like the days are long. I've gone into the living room and there's like a VHS sitting there, like in the living room. And you know, like when you're a kid, the TV's your life, so yeah. you notice shit, you know. Mm. And I still remember seeing this VHS, and there's a dude in a yellow jumpsuit holding a nunchuck. Yeah. And I'm like, the fuck's this, man? I'm looking at it. Spent like 20 minutes, like looking at it, like what the fuck, you know, over and over. Mum comes in and she just goes, "This is Bruce Lee. He was the greatest martial artist hmm. who ever lived. Really? I think you'll like." Like his movies. That's I just mad, started man. karate. That's yeah. mad that your mum did that. They Literally. They introduced you to that. Yeah. My parents, I don't know. My dad was, he liked the martial arts films. My mum's was really against any kind of violence. It was weird. Like, we weren't allowed to watch anything that was violent. You know, so, I watched yeah. Bruce Lee, like, kill people for, for the first 10 years of my <laughs> life, man. Like, yeah. legit. You know, you know, we were mentioning those prison movies before. Yeah. Sorry, I, I didn't understand that a woman could rape another woman. I'm just thinking about that. Like, I remember watching yeah, that. Yeah, but there are women now that don't understand that. Yeah, like, but as a 10-year-old, I thought it kind of looked hot. I know that might sound bad, but in with the female-female stuff in that movie, that was actual rape, and we watched that yeah. scene together. It was a pretty, it was kind of an intense kind of scene yeah. that you don't see every day. But as a kid, I used to think that that was really sexy. That, that 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 a woman forcing another woman, but I never thought that about, say, heterosexual rape. Yeah, but I remember seeing that as a kid, and I remember seeing, you know, we talked about Basic Instinct, 
um, the, the, the lesbianism in that, I remember feeling butterflies in my stomach. Like it was just so, I was so excited. It was the first time. The lesbianism in, in Basic Instinct. Yeah. That was the first time I saw two women two kiss kissing. And it got, film. we got so excited by, by seeing this. Well, it's taboo and it's new. But, but I didn't even know that it was taboo though. I mean, I didn't yeah. even yeah, know. No, it was just something different. Yeah. I didn't, I'd never seen two women kiss, but it just looked so lovely. <laughs> you know, it just looked great. It looks. Good. It just made me happy. That's all. I just got the butterflies, and I got very excited. I remember that butterfly feeling in my stomach from seeing that. <sighs> just on what you, I just said about, like you know, people now, where there are women now that don't understand how women can rape women. Yeah, it goes back to that Jordan Peterson fucking video that I'd sent, where that woman didn't understand that mm. they that women will display a form of toxicity somehow. Mm. An aggression. Well, look at like it's not it's not a thing. But if you look at women's prison, we go back to that. There's a lot of that that goes on. They're of course, it very, is. women get raped with broomsticks, and it's not just what's in Linda Blair movies as being just no, a, no, no. In a film. It actually happens. Prisons are filled with violent people. Violence, yeah. And there are women in How there. How do they that, end up there? Yeah, they exactly. all just get on a bad rap, kill their ex husbands. Do you know what I mean? No. Yeah, and apparently female prisons are so, quite often more violent on a day to day basis than than male prisons. Really? Yeah. What do you reckon that is? Just based on emotion, they're more probably vo- volatile. They're maybe. more volatile, more emotion. Caged women in that <laughs> scenario. <laughs> yeah. Back to the caged women. Yeah, caged women in that scenario with the, the higher emotional levels, and maybe it makes them more volatile. It makes them more aggressive in those scenarios. I think you know, like with. The, I mean, okay. Do you follow Jordan? You follow Jordan Pierce and shit. You were the one of the first people to tell me about him. Do you follow his stuff now? I, I haven't. Yeah, I do. I mean, I watch his stuff whenever he's got a new video. I, I generally he's watch. He's gone. He's he's well recent. I I do follow him. I I but he's recently gone on to like Ben Shapiro's. Yeah, see, Daily I can't Wire, stand Ben Shapiro. But Daily Wire thing, and I understand why he's mm. done it, so that he can have more kind of freedom to be able to say what he wants to say without being censored. But it's going. I feel like that's going to kind mm. of hinder his audience a little bit. So you you don't like Shapiro? We we're discussing I used Shapiro to respect the other him week. Yeah. Years, years ago. But now he leans in on his ultra orthodox Jew shit, like that's gospel and that's what the right way is, based on his sexual um, inadequacies. So you think he's a dud root? Oh, he's 100%. Dude, he's, he, his doctor told his wife that it's. A, he told his wife had said that thing about the reason why she can't get wet. It's because it's a medical condition. It's like, no, it's because you're married to a fucking dweeb like. Ben Shapiro, he doesn't know what sex yeah, is. He would be a dud, right? Wait, who, yeah. who's a, who are we talking about? Ben Shapiro. Shapiro. Oh, we're talking about Shapiro. Yeah, I he, thought you meant you were talking about Peterson. No, he'd, and, be, he'd be hopeless in, at sex. Yeah, and I said this to Simo a while back. You can tell, actually. Yeah, I said this to Simo a while back. I said, I used to respect Shapiro's debates, but when I started watching more debates of him actually getting torn apart, him falling apart was just too fucking funny. He does this over-talking thing where he just speed talks yeah. and hammers home some bullshit point, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. hearsay, just to get over the top of whatever right. it is that he stumbled on. We're talking about Shapiro now. Ben Shapiro, yeah, Shapiro. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not Peterson being yeah. a dud. No, right. Shapiro being Peterson, a dud. As far as Peterson goes, like obviously I don't agree with everything he says. It's not even me agreeing with what he says. It's more him exposing the other side of whoever it is that he's debating, which is what I find more interesting. Mm. Like that woman that couldn't understand. Is that that famous interview that he did? The He's Kathy, done a few famous Kathy Freeman ones. one. Well, oh, that one that made him really... Yeah, yeah. That one I rewatched a couple of days ago. So, do you think Shapiro is a skilled debater or not? I think he is. Because he's... But it's more about the quality of people he debates. I actually saw the... I, someone had said this in... Uh, I'd quoted this years ago, man. They, they mm. said the same thing. It's more, It says more about the skill level of the people he debates because he generally turns down genuine opponents okay i mean i generally see him debating uni students that's what i'm saying he cherry picks his generally his, his mm. cherry cherry picks the debates that he gets into where when we had you know our one of our favorites hitch um yeah i never saw him debate a uni student I oh, mean, never he occasionally ripped a few members on q a audience no, members, no, no. But, but he would debate people scholars in that, like yeah in yeah. that world yeah let's say generally speaking. people at the top of the field and that's what I'm saying. Like when he comes up against Anna Kasparian from like YouTube or uh, from the Young Turks or whatever, or yeah. Cenk or whatever, it falls apart. He just goes into his perpetual fucking loop. Of, it's like, just shut the fuck up. Yeah. Man. You're not making any sense anymore. Yeah. I, I, I really like Peterson. I think he's, his podcast is great. Mm-hmm. He interviews some amazing people. Like he's had Sam Harris on. I like Sam Harris. Oh, Sam Harris is he, very good. He, Sam Harris is really well, his good. His debates with Sam Harris is a series of them and they're really full on. They're really good. What stance are they taking? 
they're trying to just they're figuring out the structure of being like it's very philosophical mm. ontological okay uh, so it's an exchange of ideas as opposed exchange to of ideas well, yeah the way that sam harris talks and debates is very well very the thing well is with structured. sam harris is that sam harris sam harris is it's interesting to me because they're they're debating you know metaphysical ideas you know like god and you know, the universe, and it's it's the deepest questions that you can ask, mm. you know what I mean? So Sam Harris, I like in his delivery that he never sounds aggressive, mm. even when he totally fucking pulls a rug out from, like, the opponent or the point yeah. or the listener, mm. never sounds like he's punching down, ever. Yeah. Just makes a point. He's got wit about him. Well, you think Shapiro's got that arrogance? <laughs> Shapiro's the most arrogant debate. Well, that, that's why a lot of people don't like him. They think he's an arrogant yeah, he such is. and such. Yeah, he's a little cock. Yeah, because of the way that he, where the way Sam Harris handles it, or oh, very diplomatic man. He is more so the, diplomatic. The point. Uh, Thomas Sowell, who you know is also a great speaker as Sam well. Sam Harris, I forgot about him. I used yeah. to watch his shit. Like there's heaps. There's some good ones. Uh, they're not debaters. I like listening to a lot of uh, these. You know, these real intellectual these brains, man. Like Sam Harris is one of them. I, I like listening to him as well. But there's this other dude who's. Um, this guy called Daniel Schmuckdenberger. <laughs> yeah, you made that up. No, no, no. You look, made that up. No, no, look Don't him lie. up. Don't lie. Don't lie. No, no, no. Look him up. He's, he's fucking great. He's like a <laughs> Schmuckdenberger. Yeah, he's like a systems theorist, and he talks about, like, different- Just how to solve, like, certain issues, like the world's problems and stuff. Mm. He's very, very, like, an amazing thinker. That's the great thing about the internet, man. It's like- The internet can be- It's like a double-edged sword. You know, there's so much shit. Yeah. But well, we find also, some gems too. There's also one. some amazing shit out there. We like, find, yeah. Whatever happened to Milo Yiannopoulos? Oh, Jesus. Oh, remember yeah. him? Christ. Remember, I just thought of him. Yeah, he they, burst they, on they, the they scene, They cancelled him. They cancelled him early. Oh, yeah, because he, he was a racist. Uh, he was a racist. He was a provocateur. Well, he's a provocateur. He's like a, yeah. a male Clementine Ford. I mean, he was a, a provocateur. I don't, but he wasn't going to get far because, you know. I don't particularly, I never trusted his integrity or his motivation, but he was a, a showman. But he was just meant to poke and, yeah. and, and you know, poke fun at, you know. The, his the entertainment. PC culture. Yeah, he and was a because provocateur. Because we're, we're so PC right now, we were like, no. But what, what they tried to get him on, that, that, the, those comments about, uh, pedis- you know the pedestry stuff with yeah. teenage boys, and they they tried to get him on that, and I actually agreed with what he was saying because if you actually listen to what he was saying, it did make some logical sense, and he was speaking about his own history. He made a very specific point about um, fifteen or sixteen year old boys that are homosexual that have a very hard time, and how they find benefit from having relationships with older men, you know, men that are say thirty or thirty five, because these men kind of Initiate, initiate them into this world that you know this homosexual world and but it's actually okay to be a part of as opposed to well yeah that they show them that it's, why it's, is it okay to be a part it's of it's a it's a guide do you know what I mean it's like a these older men become a guide for them and kind of help them help them along their journey which is a little different from the majorities that's the point he was making and that point does make sense i'm not saying i'm not condoning relationships between 16 year olds and 30 year olds but i'm not i can also see that there could be some benefit in and there for that 16 year old boy well that's what thing has just been done for kevin spacey you know you could you could argue that no nah, but kevin that was spacey. different that was no that was no introduction to a thing that was just straight assault i don't know man it's a gray area i i, I don't know if i agree with this point by the way i i, I still see it as you know there's still that age gap, and it's yeah. No. You know, I, I don't agree with the age gap in terms of that that relationship being what it is, but I can understand the point of that, the point that he was the, making the, the, as the far lost, as guidance. The lost homosexual boy that is this way and 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 wants guidance, wants a mentor, that he gets some kind of benefit from that situation. That, you know, that makes sense to me. I put this up like with random people. Uh, yeah, yeah, they poo poo large age gaps in like you know relationships and shit like that it's like look at your grandparents bro your grandmother was 15 your grandfather was 29 yeah it's like they're the, the darlings yeah. of the family like they must be protected at it's, all costs it's, it's, con- it's contextual yeah it? yeah, yeah. how does it make it any like as in what did we know then that we don't know now yeah. or the other way around well if say if i was a you know cultural, if we were 15 year old boys yeah, i get it i'm just saying like yeah so that conversation like you don't get what i mean don't stress. No, but if- <laughs> Don't look at me like that either. No, I'm looking like that. <laughs> <you. laughs>
<laughs> Sorry, man. But we, if we were 15-year-old boys <clears throat> and there was a 30-year-old woman that was interested in us, of course we'd jump at that opportunity. If we were physically attracted to the, you know, and it's very exciting, uh, would we benefit from that? Probably not apart from having some you, a sexual know? experience. Yeah, you'd benefit from it. Well, what I'm saying is apart from the sexual experience, that in, in that sense, I don't think that... The, the journey of assistance is the same. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you have that homosexual boy that is feeling lost... It's a different but, but, world. But why, it's but a different why, world. My question is, is, why is that different for the homosexual boy? Because homosexuals are still pretty... Um, they're still closeted. It's well, his, still- historically, and Janopoulos was, Janopoulos was talking about his own experience in the yeah. 80s. I don't know. It would have been in the 80s, I'm sure, where he grew up in this, in this family that was you know, conservative, and this is the way that he was, and there were no outlets. I mean, there was nothing out there to say that the way you are is okay and here's some kind of a guide. So then you have this 30-year-old man that comes along that you meet and you get involved with him and he kind of makes you feel like the way you are is okay and he kind of maps out a road. It's okay to be gay and he maps out a road in how it is okay to be gay and what you do because there's no one else telling you that it's okay and how to be that way. So that was your point. Hang on a second, point. but, 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 but mm. where did he grow up? In some fucking village in the middle of nowhere. Hang on, I'll look it up. No, he grew up in the UK. Well, if he grew up in like a city, I mean, surely he's No, but be- I mean, I can even remember in, in the 90s, I mean, homosexuality here in the 90s, you know, wasn't really a mainstream thing. There wasn't, it was still pretty much, you know, on, on the fringes. And it wasn't a big thing. Now it's everywhere. I think it's the point. The point. The point here is is the fact is, is we're talking about age, the age difference here. We're talking, and it comes back. We keep coming back to this about uh, underage someone who's underage mm. being with someone who's that's overage. That's overage. Yeah. Okay. Regardless of them being straight or gay. But the point that Yiannopoulos made was that that boys, let's say the fifteen or sixteen year old, as he was, get some kind of benefit in that homosexual context, being with the older man. I mean, that was his point. He wasn't saying it's it's okay to have a relationship like this or it should be condo- um, condoned, but what he was saying was that there is some benefit in that relationship right. for that boy. Oh, yeah, this is, got cancelled. This is what he actually or, said. Oh, yeah, he got hammered. Okay. Something along those lines. He said that <laughs> sexual relationships between 13-year-old boys and adult men and women can be perfectly consensual and positive experiences for the boys. And then, like, he was forced out of his position at Breitbart when all this sort of shit happened. CPAC was revoked, like, he's all that sort of stuff. Then he said he's not a supporter of pedophilic relationships and that his statements were merely attempts to cope with his own victimhood as an object of child abuse by unnamed older men. Object of child abuse. So he's actually framing it as being child, child, child abuse. abuse. No, it was him dealing with his own experiences with child abuse. So it actually can be consensual. Well, it can be consensual, but that doesn't mean that that doesn't affect that teenage yeah. boy or girl. Obviously, so if, it's, if it's consensual, is it child abuse? It's, yeah, but can a child consent? That's the whole well, point. A, a child that is post pubescent is capable of initiation and seduction because they're yeah, post pubescent. Yeah, uh, the the a fourteen year old girl, a fourteen year old boy certainly is capable of initiation and seduction. But then again, I think. That level of maturity, subjective to but every yes, individual, because they're not emotionally and intellectually developed. So I think what would hurt them in that scenario is if they get involved in a relationship with an adult and they can't handle that relationship. They're, they're not evolved enough in any way to be able to handle that that scenario. Or that person's a predator. Period. Or that they're and that person grooming. is a predator. That person is grooming them. You know, yeah. whatever, whatever. But I mean, in the case of you brought up Spacey before, um, I think there was that case where that boy claimed. He's a man now, but he claimed that Spacey entered the, the Some room. Some party or something, wasn't he it? He shouldn't have been at this uh, at this party. He yeah. was a, a little boy. But anyway, he was there, and the story went that Spacey came into the room. He was really drunk. He pushed the boy on the bed. He the, made some aggressive advances towards yeah, and, him. Yeah, and the boy pushed him off and ran away. Yeah. We don't know what really happened in that room. We'd, we, he could be telling the truth. He could be exaggerating. He could be lying. But the point is that 14-year-old boy. Was he 14? 13, 14, yeah. 15. I, anywhere in between those bra- that bracket that boy is capable of coming onto someone that the boy is capable of coming onto mm. someone the 14 year old boy is capable yeah, but he but you yeah, just Ra- said anthony that- rapp was 14 14 yeah but you just said he doesn't know what he's doing they're not mentally capable of of understanding uh, no, no, what in, they're in doing a, what, what, I, what i meant by that was in a relationship context so i don't believe 
what I believe is really damaging in the pedestry context is if you have a 14 or 15 year old in a relationship with a 40 year old or a 30 year old, because they're not, they don't have the intellectual capacity or the emotional evolution to be able to handle a relationship with an adult. That's just, it's ridiculous. But, the, but, but, but just the, uh, the plain sexual encounter is okay. No, 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 no. I'm not saying it's okay. But what I'm saying is that that 14 year old is capable of initiation and is capable of seducing someone. Right. Because they, they're someone post- who's an adult. Well, someone who's anyone. They could, they're capable of seducing another 14 year old. They're capable of seducing a 40 year old. Yeah. I'd said it ages ago on this um, podcast. I said something about I don't know a about conversation. That. Well, I said be- a conversation. I you're, was you're a sexual com- being. Hang on. Ages ago, I was yeah. talking about, on this podcast, I was talking about a conversation that me and you had had about this same thing. Yeah. And we were talking about how uh, women, uh, girls mature a lot quicker than they do. boys mm. sexually mm. in the f- point of not just physically like, you know, they mature, but in the sense that mentally they become more aware of their their power as, 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 as females, females. Their, their power of like mm. what their physical appeal is to other men mm. and how they can use it. To gain advantage or gain leverage. But also the opposite, and that, that makes them, uh, you know, that they can be uh, uh, a target to, you know, victims in a way. Oh, 100%. Yeah, they, yeah. Can, they can be victims. They, they get it over be, their head and they don't know. You get, that's yeah. that's yeah. the whole point because they're not evolved yeah. enough to be able to handle it. Yeah. But I was I was seducing and initiating when I was 14. Yeah, but who? I, w- but how old were these people? Well, they were around the same age. Exactly. Well. Yeah, but still, I could, still could have done it to a 30-year-old too. I'm still capable of well, hitting that's, a 30-year-old. Well, that's what you think. Mm-hmm. You think that, but a 30-year-old could have looked at you and laughed. Yeah, then I get rejected. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm still <laughs> capable of trying to seduce that 30-year-old. Yeah, right. Okay. But, yeah. you're a, but you're a male too. That might not necessarily be true for a female. Of seducing the older- Yeah. Seducing an older man. Okay, wait a second. When you were in high school, how often were guys your age hooking up with older girls? How often were girls your age hooking up with older dudes? The girls were hooking up with- Standard. When we were 15, 16, they they all had boyfriends that were like 19. Yeah, and when they were 14, they were with guys that were 16. Yeah, or even older. Yeah. Yeah. And that was a common theme. Because I remember we'd be in high school at 15, and mm. every girl that we knew in our year level had an older boyfriend, yeah. usually finished school and had a car. Yeah. Mm. They're capable like, of coming you can't, up. You can't compete with that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not capable of handling relationships right, with adults. Okay. They're yeah. capable of coming on to adults. Gotcha. Because yeah. they, uh, they've hit puberty. They've gone through the changes. They've got that, that, that sex drive. They've got yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that yeah. interest. But they're not capable of the relationship. They're not capable of the relationship, but they're more than capable of coming onto that yeah. that adult and having sex with them. Okay. That so, sense. that 14-year-old in that room with Spacey, I mean, how do we know that he didn't, you know, he's looking for a leg up in Hollywood. His parents have allowed him to go to this party for networking. How do we know that that boy didn't come on to Spacey? He's more than capable of doing it. A 14-year-old, absolutely. We don't know what happened, but I'm saying it's and a possibility. Spacey didn't know his age either, did he? No. Well, I, I, he attested he, was he didn't know his age. I remember I got into a big debate with um, <laughs> somebody I went out on a meeting with, um, and we had the example of, well, say the three of us are at a club. Say we're at 161, and we've met three girls. And we suspect they're really, they're quite young, but we're at a club, whatever. And we like these three girls who go back to our houses and we, we have we sex with them. Away, yeah. And then the next day we've got the police on all our doorsteps because these girls happen to be, you know, 15. Isn't that what happened in Raging Bull? Raging Bull, De Niro. The film? Yeah, he, he was like owning a club or a restaurant at, at, towards the end and he made out with some bird. 15-year-old? Yeah. I don't remember. I'm pretty sure. And but, cops turn up, and he's like, she didn't look at, like... Well, uh, this is my point, and we would be legally exonerated from any charges because we were in a venue that is overage. Oh, whoops, sorry. The there people are. in there are 18 plus. So, <clears throat> it is, we, it's not like you check people's driver's license or passport to check their That's age. That's what happened to Akon. Yeah. Do you remember, do you remember a- you know, Akon, the singer? Yeah, the R&B sorry, singer. sorry, man, I'm just... Um, you all right? I'm fading. Yeah, okay, we'll wrap it up on yeah. this. Relax. Akon the singer was in a club in Jamaica. Mm. I think I'm pretty sure it was Jamaica, somewhere in the Caribbean. Yeah. Club was 21 and over. So he's doing his act on stage as normal. And then some girl got up 
that he did like a, a lap dancey thing too, that she was like twerking and yeah. so a pretty provocative dance mm. thing. Mm. Turns out she was like the immigration minister's fucking daughter or something, mm. and she was under twenty one. They all came at Acon to cancel the cunt. He actually wrote a song about it, right? right. And he's like, the club was over twenty one. If anyone should be uh, should get into trouble legally, it should be the club for not checking ID. Yeah. Now, we as the men in this venue have every reason to believe that everyone else around us is at least 18, 18 years yeah. old. And that's my argument. We are not to blame for this. And we know that when girls, teenage girls dress, get all dolled up and go out, they can actually look at least 18 and oh, over. Dude, you standard. know, guys can't generally, but girls, girls can. Yeah. So that was my whole point. And then this, this idiot said to me, you're just de- trying to defend laws made by men that are there to protect men in the most uh, repulsed. This person was extremely repulsed by what I was arguing with. And I was extremely repulsed by their reaction, of course. But th- that, that was my whole point. I mean, we are, not, we are not to blame for that because we had every re- – and legally we're not – and I don't believe even morally we're not, We had every reason to believe those girls were at least 18. All indicators said that they were overage. So. A- exactly. So, you know, like I said, we don't check people's IDs to – No, but people don't race. check people's IDs. Yeah, exactly. It's the door – the door – you know, the door stuff, that's their job. Beyond it, that – You know what the irony is? Well, <laughs> I'll close on this. That's actually a theme in train spotting. The movie Train Spotting mm. that this podcast is named after, fucking Mark Renton. Uh, what's his name? The Liam, um, the actor in Train Spotting. I forget his fucking name. He's famous um, Scottish actor now. Um, yeah, he goes to a club, gets takes E and all types of shit, meets a girl, mm. ends up banging her, and wakes up in in her house, and she's actually like in high school. Mm. He had no idea. Yeah. Uh, if you don't have any idea, you're completely legally exonerated. And by being in that club, that is enough grounds to be exonerated because you're in that space you should be a lawyer <laughs> should i yeah oh. maybe you can use him to get you off when you go to trial <laughs> for what exactly i don't know <laughs> i just feel like it has to be part of the legacy no, man. fuck you <laughs> <laughs> no one's getting shit on me man <laughs> i've got a clean sheet i don't want to fucking dirty it some, make up some story about some fucking. Oh, it's going to come full circle with this podcast. <laughs> no way. You're right up. <laughs> in August of 2022. And we have it on record yeah. him saying this. It's on the internet. <laughs> Fuck, now I'm paranoid. <laughs> Don't let this episode get out. <laughs> no, no. All right, look, you're fading. It's late. What time is it? I'm pretty sure it's It's 11. Oh, All Jesus. Right. All right, I need dinner. Um, thanks, guys. Thank actually, you. I'm just more happy that I actually have seen you both yeah, in the same good. space. We it's need to do ch- this. We should do it more often. That was a good chat. It's hard. Yeah, look, I understand we all have revolving um, schedules and shit, but if we can organize this at least once every so often, I reckon yeah. it's, uh, it's a breath of fresh air. Good. I feel like it's been therapy for the last three hours. It's been amazing. good. It's good, man. Thank you. Thanks for no, having no, no. me. Thanks you've for having both, us. You've both been on before in in some capacity, and now you're at the new joint together. It's, I think it's, uh, it's yeah. poetic. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. 